Welcome everyone. This is Glenda Dawson and I have Moon Girl here, Sarah Garcia on the Paranormal Dolls. And we want to thank you for following us, for continuing the journey with us. And uh, you can find us on the Glenda's Magical Creations channel on the Conscious Awakening Network on Roku TV, Apple TV, Fire, uh, Amazon Fire TV, and other various streaming platforms. So um, we have a terrific guest today, and uh, she is Shelly Wells, who is the event facilitator at the Old Bower Boo Inn. Thank Hi. you, Shelly. Welcome. Oh, well, thank you for having me. This is exciting. Absolutely. Can so you tell us? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Glenda. Tell us about yourself and what you do. Well, um, Old Bear Buin is a very historic place. Um, it was it's been part of the community of Baraboo, Wisconsin since 1864. So that's a long time, almost close to 160 years old. And it's it's in a tourist area. So if anybody's been to Wisconsin, they might know, they may have ridden a roller coaster in Wisconsin Dells or gone to the water park or visited Devil's Lake State Park, which is an amazing place to go for hiking and boating, just lots of summer recreation. And then also in our community is... Um, you've ever heard of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, we are the home, and I shouldn't say this, but it's kind of funny. We're the, the home where they found enough freaks to start a circus. So, <laughs> <laughs> but actually it's, um, so there's a lot of, a lot of history in the area. It's um, built on indigenous land. So there's a lot of energy and there are many places in Baraboo, Wisconsin that, um, that are considered to have highly or highly spirited buildings. Mm -hmm. For whatever that reason might be, we still can't explain it. Mm -hmm. um, but Old Baraboo Inn originated by a couple of immigrants from Germany and Austria. They were George and Anna Bender and they built this. It looks like it should be in New Orleans, the outside of the building. It's just, just very beautiful and um, it's red, so you can't miss it. And it's in a very historic part of Baraboo, the old train station that used to be the Chicago Northwestern Railroad came through there. It brought old pictures, if you looked at, brought all kinds of military soldiers, um, hometown guys back to the city and back to the area thousands and thousands of people have come through that. And in its heyday, um, well, this will probably give you an idea of what Baraboo liked to do. Uh, the old Baraboo Inn used to be the Bender Brewery. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm, German lager beer brewed right there, a tunnel that goes underneath the building or underneath the street to the building across the street, which used to be the Baraboo City Brewery or the Rulin Brewery. And two blocks down the other way was the Effinger Brewery. So <laughs> what do you think people like to do in Baraboo? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do the rink, right? So Sauk County was known for growing hops, and that was a big, big, big part of the money-making industry in that area until, of course, um, Prohibition hit. That was not good for many people. Um, and Especially not in that area. <laughs> no, no. This is where they came to have fun and, yeah, maybe too much fun at times. Um That'd be it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So there have been so many different groups. Well, first of all, I never really read about prohibition in my high school or my college textbooks. I don't know about you, but I'm like, I didn't know that whenever I ask people on the, we do ghost tours, ask people, how long did prohibition last? They'll be, I don't know, five years, maybe. Do you guys know? I thought it was for longer than that. I'm not sure. Am I wrong? Yeah. It's like, it was 13 years. I was going to say 10. Close enough. Right. All right. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good guess. But like across America. So I don't, I can't even imagine what that was like for people 
that um, routinely now, you know, socially, people might go out and stop and have a glass of wine or whatever. But for 13 years, it was illegal. Um, so people found a way around that. Uh, yeah. Oh, and they did. And since you brought that up, um, we know about the, all, the other thing I never learned about in my textbooks were speakeasies, right? <laughs> The day of the speakeasy. And so old Bear Bowen, um did have a speakeasy in the basement. And so it was like, shh, don't be quiet, be quiet, right? Well, how did they get their beer? Did they continue to brew it? Um, not sure, but there are lots of stories. And because it is a big, it's on the top 10 most haunted in America list now for both Time Out Magazine in New York City and Food Network has put them on it. Um, and it's been on a few TV shows. Um, people will travel from different areas to hear about the history and see if they can't get some action while they're there. But we did learn also that during that those years of prohibition, um, they got caught. <laughs> they got caught having the speakeasy. And so a judge actually shut down the building for a year. Mm -hmm. So this building is so much history. It used to be a circus bar. And in the back bar, in the back, we call it gangster bar now, there behind the, the current walls that are there, there were, there were old clown faces painted on there. And a, a, was it maybe three weeks ago, somebody actually caught, yeah, uh, a not, a not so nice looking clown in one of the mirrors in the back bar there. We're like, oh, wow, look at that. How cool is that? I wonder when they came through here. But yeah, so it's I just so rich. I hope the picture wasn't scared of clowns. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I hope the person who took the picture wasn't scared of clowns. <laughs> They were a little freaked out. I do have to say, this this was not like Happy the Clown from the Circus <laughs> Wendy's Museum <laughs> that was coming through. Um, yeah, a lot of people are freaked out by clowns, just like they are by dolls. They just, they don't like them. But that is part of the community of Baraboo, Wisconsin. And in fact, coming up June 24th this year is every year in the summer, they have a huge circus parade again and a, a celebration of the circus. And we are also having a big event that day, um, June 24th, it's a Saturday. And we have Dave Schrader will be with us mm, um, from nice. Paranormal 60. A couple of the Netflix guys from 28 Days Haunted will be there. And one of our favorite um, mediums in addition to Moon Girl coming is Scotty Rourke. So we're gonna have, we're gonna celebrate. Um, the owner just recently passed about two months ago. And so we, um, it would have been his 60th birthday weekend and 20 years of service to historic preservation and paranormal education. That's what the Old Bear Bowen is about. Reliving history, remembering what life was like back then and mm -hmm. celebrating and not just destroying it. That's really important to us that we just think that history isn't something to just be destroyed. In fact, it's really like a haunting. We uh, have participated in World's Largest Ghost Hunt for many years. Mm -hmm. And the belief there is that ha a haunting is just a history wanting to be heard. Mm -hmm. So we have some of the most, I mean, they love to get on camera when the ghosts come. When people come, anytime they're filming or videoing from participants to people that are putting together something, some kind of a film, they love to be part of the action. So um, the former former owner bought the property and when it was sitting, had been destroyed by a fire and mm -hmm. sat vacant for 40 years except for storage. And so it took probably three years to bring that building back to where people could enjoy it again. And that is when the first activity started to happen. It's like, where'd my hammer go? I just put it down and now it's not there. I shut those lights off last night and in the morning <laughs> they're on again. So he's starting to think he's like, his name is BC. He's starting to think he's like, wait, am I just been working too hard? Am I am I losing it? You know. So he has a couple guys working with him, and he says, "Hey, will you go down and shut the lights off tonight." Well, in the morning they come back, and of course the lights are are on. And finally, people said, "Hey, I think you got ghosts." <laughs> and so that's when paranormal teams 
started to come in and start to capture evidence. And to this point, there have been so much, there are even recordings of believed to be Al Capone coming through the building. Um, two of them are on the Old Bear Bowen YouTube page, if anybody wants to take a peek at that page. There's some cool, cool stuff, but we have cowboys. And, you know, later on, it was an old saloon. It was a brewery. It was a boarding house. And, of course, another thing that wasn't in our textbooks was the business of brothels. Mm -hmm. And I just can't believe how widespread they were across America. I, I don't know what you guys think or, you know, view. Well, you know, they have to make a living somehow, right? And that's what they said. Yes. It's a rent room because I went and I investigated and I can assure you it is haunted. So you heard it from Moon Girl, Mistress of the Paranormal. It actually is haunted. And I picked up uh, quite a few things there. And uh, I actually like that brothel thing going up the rent room. And it was cool. <laughs> you picked up stuff there. I know, I know. It was like you were in the back room, the working girls room, um, the ones that started back there. Yep. And then as they got more experience, we came to the front. But there's a madam that still stands in the corner and watches the trains come in. She has red hair, but she will not talk to you. She's not nice. Mm -hmm. She's not bad, but she's all business. <laughs> You know, she's, she's doing her job, but yeah. she would let the girls know when the trains were coming in and let's go to work, ladies. And so I guess the best visual I can give you uh, without having been in there, the front bar is like an old saloon bar. And it's as if you were walking into Gunsmoke, if anybody's old enough to remember Gunsmoke and Miss Kitty coming down the stairs with her boa and drinking and card playing and it just has that feel. There's even bullets in the walls still. Um, so there's a lot of happy energy. Our favorite, well, one of our favorite cowboys, uh, we understand, was shot and killed. We don't know why in the bar, but he liked the women. And he still oh. likes them. <laughs> He is the biggest flirt. And what's fun, we'll try to get him going. We'll say, hey, cowboy, can you give us a woohoo tonight? And he's got a southern drawl. So it's really fun and exciting when he comes through. He'll say, yes, ma'am, or I sure do. It's You just know his voice. It's just so we know so many of them that reside there. And when people come through, they tell us this is just so different. You are all so different because it's like you're inviting them to a conversation in their old, old parlor upstairs mm -hmm. and they they want to share a story. Or for the most for the most part, that is what the energy is like in that part of the building. Um, I do have to say that BC, the owner, was did. Um, get invited to be on a show with uh, one of my favorite paranormal teams, the Ghost Brothers, mm -hmm. and another one who teamed up with the Ghost Brothers, Jack Osborne, and they put a show together called Fright Club on Discovery Plus. Okay. So fun. So the first season, Old Bear Boy got invited because of the amount of, how do I say this tactfully? How would you say it, Moon Girl? Uh, you know what? Say it as trashy as you want, and we're all equal. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, well, it's called paranormal porn. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, there's so much has been captured, and that's what they chose to um, put their show together around because they're still working. <laughs> And if you got the dollar bills, <laughs> you way, might I left two dollars in the in the in the ladies' room. I, got, I pulled out two dollars. I go, look, ladies, you don't gotta do nothing, but this is <laughs> for me. It's tip, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, it's so funny, and it it happens consistently. Um, but so Jack Osborne and the Ghost Brothers showed some of the clips of the working girls still working from an SLS cam. Mm. Quite interesting on their yeah, show. And, no, oh yeah, it's like oh my, oh my gosh! It we I warn everybody going upstairs. It's X-rated, <laughs> so I'm just warning you guys. 
<laughs> we don't know who's coming forward tonight. Is it the ladies, the cowboy, the kids, the school teacher, Capone, the numerous entities um, that decide that they want to communicate that night. So there is a whole book written about the old Baraboo Inn. It's called Where the Party Never Ended, Ghosts <laughs> of the Old Baraboo Inn by Amelia Cotter. And honestly, that party goes on 24 seven there. So dead or alive, it's a place to come and, <laughs> and enjoy the history and this 1864 year old building. So it's Ghost, the episode with them is called Ghost Gone Wild, which is a perfect name for us, episode seven. And when they interviewed BC, there were actually three paranormal activities that took place right during the interview. And Jack jumped off his chair. Marcus went crazy. It was <laughs> every time I show it, when I have a tour group come through, they are in stitches. So if you want to watch it, Fright Club episode seven ghost gone wild we're on there there you go Something now has to watch i hear all the good stuff and the laughing and all that other stuff has there been anything negative oh yes and we rarely allow people to go to the basement okay so the basement tours happen during one of our big five-hour lockdowns not our smaller ghost hunts that are, that are about two hours. Mm -hmm. um, it's not for everybody. And if people are very sensitive, they often have to leave that area, the area around the execution pole in the basement where so many people, there's so much, we have to show the highest respect because there were so many lives lost, not even just in the basement, but on the main level, public hangings, knifing, shootout. I mean, imagine living back in those days. Mm. It was just drunk and, and mad. And I mean, who knows what was going to happen. Um, but in the basement, there have been, there has been recordings too of Capone mm -hmm. um, having brought his lots of illegal activity down there. Um, just about as horrible as you could imagine. There's an interrogation room down there. Mm -hmm. And, and we have so many more questions than we have answers, but each time a paranormal team comes in and captures more evidence or a medium walks through like moon girl, we hear more about the story. And when you hear it from like three people and then you catch the EVP that somewhat matches the story, how can you not believe that that truly, truly happened mm -hmm. to someone down there? So you can often hear a humming of a woman. Some people feel like it's a, um, she's like a lullaby, possibly. Like she's low, she has a baby. We've heard a woman say, um, my son, my son, he died, he died. I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. So we believe that there have been, there were illegal abortions. I mean, these poor girls, they were a lot of them young way too young but needing money and some of them had children and so we're like are is that where the children came from but there was also a school teacher in the building the ab we've we have um evps of children singing the abc song it's like why why would there have been children so more, much, much of it is linked to the history of the building. However, we also get some real modern things that happen. Um, back to the upstairs again, where they were having a party <laughs> three weeks ago, the investigator asked if they had a message for anybody. And the group sitting around and one of them said, music. She goes, oh, do you want me to play you some music? And a male voice goes, male ghost goes, yes, yes. And then she goes, okay, well, what kind of music would you like? Would you like me to play? And a female very clearly says, word up. Whoa. <laughs> word up. So I don't think that's your historical ghost. <laughs> no, that was an 80s ghost. Right? An 80s By baby cameo? ghost. By Cameo? Yeah, what year did, was that song? By Cameo. Mm. It's like they wanted a party. Yeah. So, of course, the investigator honored their request turned on word up and the participants were filming and jamming the rum pod was going off the cat balls were lighting up the equipment was blinking everywhere as they were i don't know partying 
with the Gauss toward up. It's this is insane. It's but again, that's like. Was that a, a modern ghost? So who are all these people coming through? We believe there's portals mm. in the building. There's a mirror in the back gangster bar that has captured so many faces. Mm. So, oh, you know which one I'm talking about, Moon Girl. Uh, it's like the on the wall between the two bars with the duck. Yeah. The duck, <laughs> the duck mirror. Yeah. Well, you know, Just oh sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I when I went there, we went with two other there was another team, but you know how I am. I was like, can I go to the basement? I ran in there by myself <laughs> with my phone. I know. <laughs> and I as know. soon as I got to one of the rooms, I like, I felt something choking me. And then BC comes after me like, well, hold on, Moon Girl, don't go by yourself. And I'm like, you know, speeding on top of it. And he, and I told him, I feel like something's like choking me. And then he told me that there was somebody who like hanged themselves there. And yes. Oh, yeah. And what you don't know, and I can't remember this happened to you before or after. It's on the old Baraboo in YouTube channel. Sarah got attacked in the basement while she was with her team and she felt the hands around her neck and started to, you could see that the, what's that? I'm not good at the equipment, but the number starts to go down. Uh, and it's getting colder and colder and colder, right. whatever that thing is called. Um, but it would, it dropped down and she started to not be able to breathe. And then the REM parts went up and her team member had to break her loose mm. from whatever that was. And I asked her later, I go, Sarah, do you think that person, she said they were really big hands. And I said, do you think that person was literally trying to harm you she's or was he just trying to tell you something and she said i think he was doing to me what he had done to someone else mm. <gasps> yeah mm. I, i'm not brave like <laughs> girl like <laughs> i i um the energy when you turn the corner around the cooler and come past that's the interior that really that felt really dark right there uh, heavy you're about to turn into the thing like i went into the interrogation yeah. room and i heard people having a conversation i couldn't make out what it was but they were they were saying something it was like several people talking in there and then when you get out i did into the turn and that's when it's like a brick wall you're like Feel people like, feel it right here in every yeah, and then as far as where the pole is, I didn't necessarily get like a lot of stuff right at the pole, even though the pole there's still like bullet wounds, but it was behind the pole that little thing right behind. And BC could, yes. don't go in there. And I'm like, there's something there, and it's did he let you go there? I went anyways, and then he just <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for it. <laughs> That, that was that was yeah it felt really dark there but then i feel like he like whatever it was and i know it was a man it like warmed up and then the other one we go to you know you had guys had said that there was like a man there and people were scared but when i went there i was like look hi my name is moon girl i just want to you know connect and right before i walk into the door i felt a heavy hand on my arm and it was not trying to be mean or anything it was just oh like, okay okay and I went in there and then I saw a little girl and I was like, there's a little girl. And I told that there's like kids are here. It's a little girl hiding here or something. And then you guys told me some of the history about the, about the little girl. Oh, the kids, we don't know what's going on lately, but we're trying to find out. It seems to be that there is another adult entity that is controlling the children. Oh yeah. I'm and what we're getting. And she's, They've, she's been described as a child snatcher. Mm -hmm. And there's also been um, a history of where a man that um, would chain um, chain children. And there's some really, I, I can't even imagine what it's like to be in the spirit world in that basement or in any part. The woman's bathroom. Take a friend. 
I don't, sometimes I grab someone like we go to the bathroom with me because mm -hmm. it's when it feels kind of heavy, it's right above that heaviest room, just past the pole. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that dirt floor had where yeah. they believe there's bodies still buried under there. And so, I see oh, there. Sure. Oh. so, um, getting back to the fire because I, I can yes. feel that there's going to be questions about that. Okay. Was, it, was it like half of the building that had a fire or the top floors about, you know, it pretty much destroyed. They, they dumped millions of gallons of water. So the inside, um, when BC bought it, he had to empty the building. He had to strip every board and every wire and completely bring that building back to safety mm -hmm. from it had, it had so he did a lot of it's um there's still a mural on the wall that the benders from germany built it's covered up right now to protect it right. so there are some things that still remain that survived the fire um an old railing that was upstairs where the girls come out mm -hmm. and would wave the guys in is on the stage there um the another owner's painting survived the fire he died in the building Oh, he was actually, it was his son who owned it after his father's death that was there and left the night the fire started. It was a grease fire in the kitchen, oh. or at least that's what rumor has it. But we have a historian and she's uncovered some pretty amazing things. Not, it's not the only fire that that building has had. That's probably the third fire. And we have had people um, who are very sensitive that have been there and said, did this building ever have a fire? And we're like, yeah, how do you know? And they're like, I'm feeling heat. I'm feeling like I'm sunburned. And one of them literally pulled up their sleeve and her whole arm was red. Mm. Somebody, uh, it's just so weird what happens. But <laughs> going back to that fire thing, one of the other fires we know about Working girls room, moon girl, the red room. Um, when one of the benders, Isabella Bender, her husband, owned it, uh, it's written in the Baraboo Public Library that he said the working girl's bedroom got even hotter that night or something like that. The bed got even hotter that <laughs> night. The working girl's beds got even hotter that it's in was written like that. And we're like, okay, he's basically just coming short of saying, <laughs> Oh yeah. But there was a little fire in that part of the building mm. and there was a third fire. So we just have so much fun when people come in. Um, BC <laughs> has had it open for 20 years and people would walk in that used to work there for a different business that never talked about the ghosts because back then if he they did you can imagine people yeah. thought they were wicked mm -hmm. they were crazy they didn't dare talk about it in the community mm -hmm. but what's really cool now is like is that old lady still in the basement no she's upstairs knocking on doors now <laughs> do you <laughs> think that old lady is anna bender it could be anna bender we don't know but boy we we just find that it's um when people come and do the small ghost tours an hour half to two hours they it they're just when they leave they're like wow this was so cool it was really fun so we call it spooky fun because we do have a portal box there that they talk to you through mm. and they often answer your questions they're happy to have a conversation for the most part they're just used to it so all three levels i have a bit different energy we have many full body apparitions caught on camera in the back gangster bar area and that's including a full um looks like a looks like a 1920s gangster standing in the hallway it's hard to believe that wasn't a real person but nobody had nobody living can is transparent correct yeah <laughs> so <laughs> You can't see through us, but you can see through them. And now there's been sightings of BC in there too. Can you tell? Oh us my gosh, that? yes. So hmm, this is just how do they do this stuff? I can you explain that one? How do they do what they do? So BC was my younger brother. 
So um, I've seen the place since he bought it. My baby brother. Yeah. And we just, we just lost him at the end of February to our family heart disease. So um, it's been a huge loss and we're all trying to adjust and, and continue to go down the journey that he's, he supported for how many years there and people are like, you're going to do that. And we're like, we're going to try, we're going to keep this going. Well, the very night of his celebration of life, it was packed mm -hmm. and 20, no, nine paranormal investigators in the back gangster bar with their equipment rolling. Well, I had shown a clip then after one of my brother's favorite shows of all time was Gunsmoke. And so they did a short film. It's also people like to film in there. So we did a shootout for one of our events, a real shootout. My brother was the sheriff. Mary Marshall, paranormal researcher, was the saloon girl. Um, another investigator was one of the bad guys. And then we had a guest there from The Walking Dead. Skylar Felton used to come and do some fun things with us. So he was Django. <laughs> So they did this short film and my brother literally had, it was, it was crazy cool. And I showed the clip at the celebration of life. And I'm like, this is compelling evidence of my brother's um, addiction to gun smoke or <laughs> overdose of gun smoke. So uh, it was really fun. That night, one of the questions that the investigator asked was BC, what was your favorite TV show? And everybody knew because they had seen the clip. Immediately through the portal box came Gunsmoke in his <laughs> voice. And 25 people screamed and erupted because it was so incredible that, yes, he is still there telling us what to do. We <laughs> It's like, no way. Somebody goes, can I go to the basement, BC? And the answer was clearly, no way. <laughs> he's still protecting he's still guiding us he's still um trying to help us understand and there, there's been and then the latest two weeks ago a participant got a picture of a cowboy behind the back bar and I looked at it and I thought, wow, I don't know if it's our southern draw cowboy because he had a 10 gallon hat when you see him and he's really tall. And I go, when I showed it to the group, I'm like, I'm not sure, but it's a cowboy. Come to find out the investigator said, you know him, Shelly. Mm. Take another look. Mm. You know him. It is my brother. Standing behind the back bar where he always helped us with the slideshow. He was always there talking to the participants, but he was in the clothing that he wore for the shootout film. Mm. He was the cowboy. It's like, what are you going to do next, BC? <laughs> and without the glasses. And without his glasses. So I was talking to Moon Girl this week, last week, last week, and he was coming through. Oh, my gosh. She's amazing. Like, I couldn't believe how spot on she was. And mm -hmm. she, she goes, he wants to know where his glasses are. Where's his glasses? And I'm like, Oh, yeah. We noticed he didn't have them on behind the bar, <laughs> behind the back bar. He wasn't wearing them. And come to find out, none of us know what happened to his glasses. Mm -hmm. so I looked for him yesterday, Moon Girl, and I'm not going to stop until I find them because he has a request. <laughs> I better find his glasses. <laughs> it just brings so much education and so much compelling evidence of what people do in the afterlife. And I believe that my brother has gone to the light. I believe my brother's faith was strong and that he, but that he is still um, able to connect with us. I don't know how to explain it. I don't even know in words how to put it, but that he is, um, will ha continue to have a strong presence Right. in the building, but he's also with the other members of my family. And I asked Moon Girl, I go, is he okay? <laughs> and she's like, he whispers, I'm not alone, Shelly. <laughs> I'm like, okay, BC. <laughs> it was just the best gift ever, too. Well, you know, he loved that place. That was his life, right? Yes. So he's going to 
continue his his work there. I like that. I like yeah. that because we need him to. And and that's usually how it happens. You know, you you get to love a place and you just love it so much that you want to continue whatever you were doing there or help others that are doing or trying to do what you did there. Yeah. Well, and, and we'll never feel we'll never fill his shoes, but we will do the best that we can to continue. And he's still working it for us. Yeah, he's know. making it easy for us. <laughs> and, you know, it's the history that he was That's looking true. to provide to people. Um, because those are the, when we do investigations, it is not the history that you find in the books. It's the history you don't find in the books. Oh, I love that. That, I love that, that one person who you've never heard of, that yeah. one little girl that you never heard of, and, and they will never make it into the books because they were not big enough. They were not important enough, according to the historians. Yeah. But all of the people that died there, that passed away there, that keep coming back, those are all important to that place. Mm -hmm. And important to the history of that town. We have a female that, um, we, her, she's the Our Lady in White. She's beautiful. She's upper echelon. Mm -hmm. And she, um, we asked her one time, do you want some help to move on? And the answer was clearly in the recording, no, I love it here. It makes me feel alive. Mm -hmm. Some of their responses just blow me away. Well, you know, in those times, you had to be so proper and so. That's how she is. Proper. She's in what looks like a, a white Victorian dress. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. Right. So there was not much enjoyment, basically, you know? It took right. you two hours just to get dressed. Like <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> well, speaking of that. We, we think it's cowboy, but we have a spirit that mm -hmm. likes to move zippers on ladies' shirts. <laughs> this, whoever it is, is a cowboy? I kind of think so, but we're not sure because he's still kind of womanizing, you know, There's going up and down the bar. I don't something touch my legs. So. You had somebody do touch your leg. Okay. Like, this is my legs. We've, we've had like cold feeling on zipper and, and we've actually seen the zipper move on, on, on people. So I gave a warning <laughs> one night to this, to this tour group. I'm like, ladies, watch, seriously, watch your zippers. We're going back by the bathroom. Now <laughs> we go, they always outsmart me. They're uh, they're ahead of me. Cause I'm given the thing about the zipper and we're standing in the ladies bathroom and all of a sudden, boom, a button pops off the lady's coat. <laughs> she goes, um, my button just popped off. And we had seen it. And we're like, she goes, and I look at her. And, <laughs> and I go, do you have an explanation for that? She goes, no, it wasn't even loose. <laughs> and another time, somebody, ladies earrings, they'll go like this. And again, like they feel like something's going on. And then boink. It just pops right out of their pierced ear. It's weird stuff. Yeah, I'm dressing. Yeah, and I mean, is it the ladies who are admiring the other ladies' jewelry? Right. Is it the working girls who are like, oh, let me see your necklace. Pick it up and drop it. Pop the earring up. I don't, we don't know. We don't know. We can't say anything 100% for sure. I mean, because we're not on that side. But we what we can say is that it, it is typical a hundred percent typical of paranormal activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember, Shelly, we were at the bar and there was nothing there. Nobody was spraying perfume, nothing. All of a sudden we started smelling roses really heavily. Roses. And mm -hmm. we're like, it smells like roses, rose petals or like rose perfume just out of nowhere. That's typical, the rose, but it was really, really heavy that night for some reason. Um, cigar smoke. And we're like, hey, Mr. Capone, we have to call him Mr. Capone. <laughs> He's just, we have to show the highest respect, right? So is that you, Mr. Capone? I mean, they will try to tell you. If they, unless you have someone in the group who's very negative, 
and is taking their energy away, they're not going to do anything for you. So we say from the get-go, hey, please keep an open mind. Skepticism is great. We should all be skeptics because we can't see anything. However, mm -hmm. please let's give them the respect and the energy that they deserve because it's their choice whether they do something for us and it takes a lot of their energy. Mm -hmm. So when we're, when we're unified with our group and everybody's positive and just so grateful for even the smallest thing, it's like, wow, watch it happen. Here we go. <laughs> Fun time. You got to come. <laughs> you got to come again, Moon Girl. You got to come. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm good. Good. I loved it there. I think Linda would love it too. <laughs> yes. You never know. I, uh, I'm kind of traveling to uh, Michigan in September. So oh. I may just take a little detour. <laughs> there you go. Come on up to Circus Town. And they have great pizza, by the way. The oh, bar yes. has pizza and drinks. I'm not much of a drinker, but they were. BC knew how to make a drink, okay? <laughs> well, you got to have a ghost bomb. BC made it. It's um, it, The place is known for being the home of the ghost bomb. One, the bar is open, bomb, okay? <laughs> it's, we're a little different. The bar is open. And you, it's the home of the ghost bomb. One you have control over and one you don't. <laughs> No, it's all great fun. Always look forward to the next adventure at the Old Bear Buen. We do have an event page on our Facebook um, page. You got to go to the events tab and they pop up on there. So just go there and you will see the, uh, the uh, profile, the event, the uh, Facebook page. And you can look it up, guys. Right. And we do privates for par for paranormal teams, too. There you so go. Come on up. There you go. It's always Thank good. You. It's always yeah. good, right? It's always good to get the, the history from the ghost perspective, as I call it. Oh, I love that. From because, the ghost. you know, we write history. We say, oh, this happened, or we heard about this. and But to get, like, the stories from the prohibition from their side, how it really happened. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and the girls, how they really had knew that they had to be on call as soon as the train arrived or, you know, if the madam said you're next and I don't care if you're tired, whatever you go next and you're working. Right. You're working. It, it, it's, you know, you're on call for 24 hours. <laughs> We have had mm -hmm. male ghosts hit on some of our participants that weren't working. <laughs> we have a recording. You work, you work. And I'm like, no, she doesn't work. Leave her alone. <laughs> Crazy stuff. <laughs> In the afterlife. Yeah, like Jack Osborne says in the episode, "On take you to the afterlife." <laughs> We're in Travel Channel too. Travel Channel, Amazon Prime. It's called Hometown Horror, but let me spell that: H O R R O R. We would never, ever insult in the lady. We're on hometown horror. It's called <laughs> it's called Three Ring Tear because we are the circus town, and we were the trailer, and we are the finale, and that shows the basement. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the old Baraboo Inn. Say, I would be I would be the type that would say that you would give me all the warnings, and I would say, okay, okay, thank you, and I would go <laughs> down to the basement. I don't. See, I've always had pleasant experiences because I go in with, I'm just here to hear you. I'm mm -hmm. just here to get your story. I'm not here to do you harm. I'm not here to act, ask you to be like a, a puppet or a circus act or anything like that. I'm just here to hear what you got to say. You're like a, like a paranormal journalist. Yes. There you go. Right? Exactly. Hey, that's cool. Exactly. Hey. And then paranormal journalists. And, and even in Pennsylvania, where the places I do go to, I ask them not to give me any history at all. I walk in, grab the whatever I get, and then I always go and look it up in the records and the uh, historical societies and any of the cemeteries nearby. So I look and then match what I got with what 
Cool. Do you know, you know, what's been hard about that is back in those days, so much of it was unwritten. And we can't find pictures of the inside, only the outside. Like photos weren't taken inside. No, because there was so much and, going on. But, yeah, and you couldn't really write about what was happening. You might get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, but very good point. Paranormal journalist. I there you it. go. There you go. So it's Glenda's new title. The Paranormal <laughs> Journalist. I'll add it to my list. Yes, add it to your list. <laughs> So next, instead of like a uh, moon girl, Mrs. The Paranormal is going to be a Glenda <laughs> Paranormal Journalist. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Can you, I love it. Yes, I love it. Can you tell us a little bit more about BC? Like how like all this just came together? Like one day did he just wake up and say, I'm going to buy the old Bear Boo in? Or how did all this Yeah, no, that did not. Interesting question because <laughs> um, we blame this on our, on our grandmother. So my grandma was very English, very spiritual, deep rooted in the Christian faith. But also she had this thing about her that she wrote for the Sauk County Historical Society and she wrote ghost stories. So when we go to grandma's house and sit down, <laughs> it's story time. And it was like, tell us the one about the three lights, grandma, when That's the three the lights went out. I'm going to be, okay? <laughs> Yeah, this is the grandma you're going to be. Right, yeah. Um, so it was, she was such a writer, and so much happened to her in real life, um, spiritually. I mean, she did the whole up table up thing, you know, way back then. I mean, she was born in 1899. Okay. And always tea time at grandma's house, so it was just the coolest thing. But these ghost stories, and then... Um, after our dad passed away of cardiac arrest, and it wasn't him that was haunting the house, but we lived in a very haunted house with my mom. But this house, it was not a nice haunt. It was scary. And my brother is not, um, he's pretty, it takes a lot to nerve him up or to feel fear of anything. But things would rotate in the house. That's not good, I don't think. No. <laughs> I, I don't like rotations. <laughs> it would happen to my mom when we were at school during the day, and a plant would start to rotate and get faster and faster and faster. So she took that down. So the next thing, the chain coming down from the lamp in the corner would start to hit the sides of the wall like this, and it was like, we got to get... And I had scary things happen with the shade going down on me at night, and we had to get out of there. But my brother always seems to have had something around him and then lucky me i'm around him i'm getting it too right so so then he's gonna buy he did not know old bear Buin was haunted but our dad was a big lover of history and owned one of the ringling buildings and also the effinger hotel which was just a historical landmark and my brother had the passion for the same history and he's like uh, he was drawn to this burned out, burned up building. And my mom and I are like, are you kidding me? No, I'm buying that building. It's like, oh, brother. So it was just, it took three years to empty it out. Re decide what to reuse and keep, what to get rid of, and then to start redoing the inside so that he, he made apartments upstairs. Mm -hmm. So we use one of the sides upstairs for the events and the other one is rented out. But the only renters we could ever keep and which is still there is a medium. <laughs> he can handle it. <laughs> The other people like the knocking at night, the music, the old honky tonk music at three o'clock in the in the morning coming from the bar downstairs. Just they just did not sign another lease, so <laughs> or paid to get out of there one of the two. But um, so he, yeah, he um, he had a lot of control. Wouldn't you say, Moon Girl? Yeah, he had a lot of control over the spirits. At, and he was a protector of people. He absorbed too much energy himself, actually. Um, but he was a protector, and he had pretty good control. There were some times, though, when things were a little hairy, scary. Um, he felt something go right through him that was very cold. Or, um, But he has said from 
he told someone from the other side, I do not have as much control as I did when I was there. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, why not? I already. <laughs> Is that what it is? Yeah. But he also yeah. okay. he also said, "I now know what's behind the pole. I now know. Oh. I now know, and stay away, mm. and do not go to the basement unless you're with the right person." That was his message to us. Okay. So then I'm like, okay, who's the right person? Well, he didn't name anybody, so I don't think there's one right person. Mm -hmm. I think by right person, what he meant was that someone that is so strong and has such a, what is that called? Protective shield mm -hmm. around them um, that has psychic. Um, that has hurt their team with them. And Thank yeah. you. Yeah, their you know, you know, team, their guides, and all that other stuff. Yeah, and, yes, and don't yes. have to worry about it. Yeah, mm -hmm, exactly. But stay away. Do not go unless you're with. So the other two nights ago, mm -hmm. Saturday night, um, we had an event going on, and a couple of the investigators were here to help. But they went down to clean out the cans before they filled, which was nice. The cans, the chute goes down by the pole. So they went down to clean that out. They wanted to take it through the back door, like where, where Capone came through the parking lot, supposedly. And they went in that back room, Moon Girl, where that door is open to go up the stairs and out to the parking lot. Yeah. And as soon as Mike put his hand on the door, he heard a hiss. Ooh. It was not good. And then somebody heard either go or get out. But there was a hiss and a very strong warning to not open that door. Hmm. So they listen. Smart guys, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't taunt. We don't get in fights. We don't allow anybody to do that. because, And we don't want the negative to get stronger. Yeah. So we don't want them to have any power. So we always, you know, tell people. We have had a couple people that have actually um, not followed our mm -hmm. advice. And she goes, I just got bit by a ghost. And she had a big round circle on her neck. Mm -hmm. And she, and then the male started to talk through the portal box. And this happened upstairs. And she said, are you the one that just bit me? Well, she didn't get bit. I was looking for vampire teeth, right? <laughs> I'm like, let me see your neck. <laughs> but it's just a big round circle or big round rash. She said it burns, it burns. And the male ghost, we have it on recording, says, I want to send you a message. <laughs> well, well no, it's all about respect. On this side, on that it side. Is. Yeah. It, it's it, all about respect. I mean, honestly, ladies, we don't know who we're dealing with for sure, right? Exactly. So right, we have to be careful. It's nothing that anybody should be doing to try to call out or engage. We've had paranormal investigators, BC, had a kick out of the building mm. because they were like, come on, you want to go? Let's go. I'll meet you at the pool. Let's go down to the pool. It's like, oh, oh, wow. you need to leave. You're out of here. That is horrible. Yeah. I think I'm not going to say his name. But isn't there a guy on TV that does, <laughs> that does, does I'm not going to mention any names, but like he was like a, a wannabe. <laughs> like, sorry, not, not in our house because it really is in our house. It's their house. We're yeah. in their space yeah. exactly. and you will respect that. Yeah. It's like going to somebody's house that, you know, and you should start at demanding and, and ordering and, and all that other stuff. They're going to turn around and kick you right back out. Or they're going. They're going to. I mean, they obviously that she was the second person that happened to. Mm -hmm. There was another investigator there that I don't know what was up with him, but he always got in a tango, and he was one of our small group ghost hunt leaders. <laughs> it was not good. It was he. He would get angry. Something mm -hmm. would make him angry. And he'd have to take himself out of it. And one night upstairs, oh, you know those music boxes? Mm -hmm. those paranormal, they look like a coffin. The paranormal music box started going because he'd gotten, he'd gotten a tangle with one. 
and they used the the spirit used the paranormal music box to it just started cranking faster and faster and faster and faster like it was so mad and he and he goes oh, he won't stop he's still going in there it's like yeah wow. you just made him angry yeah and that's not good so we're not about that. But, you know, BC, it's really hard without BC because BC, as Moon Girl knows, truly was the captain of the ship. Mm -hmm. He steered the ship. He set the standard. He set the expectation. Very smart guy that he knew how to deal with the spirit world at the old Baraboo Inn. And there are many. Mm -hmm. There are many. Some stay there all the time, some come and go. He was the captain of the ship. And now we're trying to get get a hold of the ship <laughs> as we're going down the water. And it's bumpy and it's so. Yeah, but, you know, it's, you already have the guidelines that he left for you. We do. So and we're you, sticking to them. There you go. And you'll be able to. Get, get to that management place where you're going to be able to everything work together, both sides. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Especially since he's steering the ship from the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The best he can, right? Exactly. So exactly. We look forward to what he's doing next. He has a plan, without a mm -hmm. doubt. <laughs> and um, he probably has a whole group right behind him supporting our process exactly. and so we're excited about that yeah. so um we have about three minutes or so do you have anything that we haven't covered that you want to talk about maybe again tell us about the event that's coming up yeah okay so um we do small group ghost hunts almost every saturday night um but occasionally and there's always a paranormal investigator there and I get to help facilitate the sideshow and get it going and stuff like that. And then we have, um, we also are going to be doing some dinner with the ghosts this summer. We're going to be doing like themed pop up events. Nice. With some guests, <clears throat> Moon Girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so our theme for the summer is really fun. Of course, it couldn't be anything but old saloon days since we've got gun smoke going on there, there and the shootout. So we're doing old saloon days at the old Baraboo Inn all summer with themed pop-up events. So there will be different things and different guests going on throughout the summer. I'm really excited about that. People will wear trigger items. They're going to be cowgirl hats, boas. Some When we do these themed events and relive history, people will dress in saloon girl. I mean, some people just go full out. But, you know, <laughs> no, just <laughs> yeah, yeah, get your costume ready. But even like the ladies that'll just put the feather in their hair and then feel it move. It's like, oh, <laughs> I think somebody likes my yeah. So we just enjoy doing. And the thing is, we, it's what's so cool is it's real. You know, this isn't an attraction where people are jumping out at you or trying to scare you because scaring you is not what we're about. We're about Mary. Tell us how you died. What happened? Tell us again. Our leading lady, Mary, Anna Bender, thank you for taking such great care of your boarders and, and being the best host ever. One time she came through Mary, right after I said that, and it was like, um, I said, thank you. She's like, you're welcome. Aww. Like, wow, well, is that you, Anna? That was so awesome. They repeat guests' names. Sometimes the guests' own relatives come through. That's pretty exciting when that happens. It happened Saturday night as grandma came through. Wow. Um, but yeah, I've had one, two. I'm the last of my family now. Sadly, I've heard from my older brother, my dad, my sister, 13 days after she passed, like I was on the telephone with her and now, and now BC. Mm -hmm. So it's like, whoa, <laughs> I am immersed in the afterlife. <laughs> 
but so yeah i would encourage anybody that's interested go on the old bear boy youtube page you can you can watch some really cool clips um and you, if you watch the one with the closet you'll understand why we say make sure you have permission before you open that closet moon girl make sure you do that next time we're gonna talk about that closet thing when i went there with bc i was like i feel a man in here and then i was like i also see a little boy in here too and we're like, he was like, you have to knock and ask permission. I'm like, they just like, kind of let me. I felt like a okay go in. And then me and you were there, and the lights were going off like crazy. I don't know if you remember that. It was it's been a while. Yes, but yes, yes, I, I do remember that. And my greatest, I'll just tell you, my biggest ghost bomb ever in the building. The thing, and I and I am kind of get a little. I wish I could control my fear better. But they they catch me off guard and they surprise me. And yeah. that's that's what gets me. So I was showing a new trigger item in the closet to one of two paranormal investigators that were going to lead upstairs that night. I go, do you want to see it? And they're like, yeah. So I go, okay, I'm going to knock. So I knock and I'm like, is it okay for me to open the door now? I put my hand, just put my hand on the doorknob. And my fingers were like this still. And the knob turned in my hand, mm. in the palm of my hand, and boom, popped the door open, and I flew back with force. Things will happen with force. Mm -hmm. And I have never had the biggest fright <laughs> mm -hmm. than I had at that time. And they laughed, and they're like, you didn't do that? I'm like, I did not. And I ran downstairs. I had PTSD total PTSD and we're getting ready for a vet. So they went in there with their SB seven and they're like, um, yeah, you guys, I know you thought that was probably kind of funny, but you kind of scared her. Who, who did that? Me. It's always me. They won't give you a name, but eventually I believe they said Paul. So Paul and I had a one-on-one -on -one later that night and it hasn't <laughs> happened since crazy stuff, crazy fun. So there you have it. Thank, Thank you, you so your much. It's, You're welcome. It was great. Um, can't wait to maybe stop by soon <laughs> and uh, meet you in person and that would be get fun. that tour. <laughs> okay. I know you'd be going downstairs, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, ladies. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Many blessings. I appreciate that.